Annyeong, Chindagu. Hello guys, that's in Korean. Hello my friends, how are you? I'm super excited as in today's videos I'm visiting the capital city of Korea, Seoul. One of the coolest cities in all the world, very famous to be the capital technology of the world and a city with a lot of rich history. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you like this video and remember to leave a comment below. Enjoy the video, travel wonderful! So, it's pretty hard to miss when you are in Asia. Standing proudly at South Korea's capital, Seoul offers everything for every kind of traveler. So get ready, as in this video I'll show you the best things to do and visit in this beautiful capital city. Begin your journey by visiting the Buchok Hanok village, which is a village that dates back to the 14th century up until 1897, when it was belonged to the Joseon dynasty, the successful kingdom back in the 14th century. And it gives you a glimpse of the authentic and traditional Korea. And here you got the Hanoks, which are the traditional houses from the Joseon dynasty. In here you can also rent, if you wish so, the traditional Hanok costumes. You see a lot of people coming and take uh, pictures with it. It's really beautiful. It feels very peaceful. So yeah, definitely a uh, must visit. It is uh, in between two of the most important palaces like, like the Chandiokun and Givokun Palace. And please don't mind my pronunciation. And uh, yeah, definitely, definitely a must visit. So yeah, as you can see, a lot of people come and take pictures um, among all this beautiful Hanok architecture. Some people even, as I said before, rent the Hanok traditional costumes. Even it's possible for men or women. I'll have a look how much it is. I might try it myself. So I have done it. I have rent my traditional costume uh, Hanok to use here in the Butchong Hanok village. There are all these shops around in which you can rent it. It cost me for two hours 20,000 won, which is roughly 15 US dollars. So yeah, pretty worth it. I mean, you blend in into the Butchong Hanok village style. So yeah, really cool. And you can do really nice pictures here in Seoul. I took a picture also with a couple of girls that were uh, just here, taking a picture. They asked me for my YouTube channel as well, so yeah, that's really cool. Here is the picture. Roughly a 20 minutes walk from Buchong Hanok village, we get to another important landmark of Seoul, Gyobokun Palace, which was the first and the largest of the royal palaces built during the Joseon dynasty. Built in 1395, Gyobokun Palace was located at the heart of the newly appointed capital of Seoul, known back then as Hanyang, and represented the sovereignty of the Joseon dynasty. It's so cool this palace, I mean, walking among all this very ancient architecture which belonged to the very important Joseon dynasty. It's really, really cool and really worth it. The fee to enter is 3,000 won, so not bad at all. The time I recommend to come, it's at 9 in the morning, which is when it opens, and it's uh, really quiet at this time. I will say that in the afternoon, uh, it gets really, really busy, so come in the morning to take really good pictures and have the palace for your own. The premises of the palace were once destroyed by fire during the engine war back in 1592. However, this uh, was later restored in 1895 during the reign um, of the King Ho Jong. So this palace was once destroyed during war and then it was restored. But it looks very well preserved. It is said that it's the best preserve of the palaces. And another must do when coming to Gyeop Bokhun Palace is to see the daily changing of the guard. This happens twice a day and it's a tradition that has been happening for many years. And it happens at 10 a.m. at 2 p.m. So do not miss the opportunity when you visit this palace to see the daily changing of the guard. It's a really nice thing to see. I managed to be very, very close to them. So I enjoy it so much. This is an act that represents how it was the daily changing of the guard back during the Joseon dynasty. So it's really good. It has all the costume, weapons, and ceremony um, that happened uh, during the Joseon dynasty. All these guards were gatekeepers of this palace. So really nice to see. 
and obviously it's included with your ticket so make sure you come here on time to see it and remember if you're enjoying this video so far make sure you give a like you subscribe to the channel and you activate notifications in order for you to discover more amazing places like this Another important landmark you got to visit when coming to Seoul is the Chandeokum Palace, which is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1997. And it is said that this palace is even better preserved than the Gyeokbokkum Palace, and it is one of the most beautiful palaces in all Seoul. This is the second largest one after the Gyeokbokkum, and it is also important to note that it got a secret garden that only allows 50 visitors a day. So if you want to visit it, you got a book in advance or make sure you come here very, very early. It is really beautiful and it um, won the UNESCO World Heritage Award because the uh, blending in all this beautiful and ancient architecture with the nature as well. So definitely a must visit. And also it's important to note that I paid 8,000 won. So this includes the entry of the palace plus the secret garden. So definitely worth it. The incredible surroundings of this palace might look familiar to you due to the fact that an important series of Netflix, Korea, was filmed here, which is called uh, The Kingdom, which is a mix of uh, the Joseon Dynasty times with apocalyptic times. So in this series, during the Joseon Dynasty, there are zombies attacking the, the kingdom. So yeah, you can watch the Netflix if you want to have a look. So yeah, it is an important place where series have been filmed as well. Another landmark you cannot miss out when coming to Seoul is the Namsan Seoul Tower which was finished back in 1971 and it used to be a broadcaster uh, communication tower and yes now it is an incredible observatory with four decks offering panoramic views of all the city of Seoul it also has bars, restaurants and very romantic spaces I have heard so yeah let's go up together and enjoy the view The price to enter to the observation deck and go all the way up is of 16,000 won, so not bad at all to enjoy these incredible views here. It took 30 seconds from the main floor to the highest one, and in the meantime they put you a video like if you are going up space. So yeah, really fun, very technological. Why it say that this place is a romantic place is because I've been told by a local that a lot of people come here for their first uh, date. So that's why they make it in a romantic way. We even got packages for couples um, if you want to come with your first date here or with your loved one, partner, wife. So yeah, it's really cool, really worth it. The views are just incredible. I suggest the best time to come It's in the afternoon so you can enjoy a little bit of the daytime and the nighttime as well. So really, really cool view from here. Another thing you got on the windows while you are looking at uh, the panoramic views of the city, you got uh, cities from all about the world, the names like for example London, Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, Mexico, and it tells you the distance from the observation deck up until there. So can you spot yours? So as I said before, you got a lot of uh, cute spots for couples or dates. So you got here a place in which you can have a seat, probably have a suite from here, from the sweet shop, or a coffee or something, and sit down with your couple or loved one while enjoying this beautiful views from here. I am on my own, so I don't have any date. But yeah, I have uh, the beautiful views here. So. By the tower you got the Nansan Mountain, which is a part of the mountain of the Nansan uh, National Park. And that's why the tower got also, apart from Seoul Tower, the Nansan Seoul Tower. So yes, this um, attraction has been voted many times as the best touristic attraction uh, when coming to Seoul. So yes, really, really worth it. And you even got amazing views from the toilet. I mean, look at this. You go even... <laughs> to do your sky restro picture. Wow, really, really cool. 
So for amazing views, comes to the toilet as well. <laughs> come to the toilet as well. So while enjoying these incredible views, you can also enjoy incredible food here at the Hankook restaurant, which is located at the Seoul Tower. So yeah, I'm waiting for the sunset, so I was very hungry, so I decided to come here, and the food just looks yummy, yummy. So yeah, I'll leave you the prices here as well. Um, yes, and let's wrap up. Delicious, really, really good. So after all of that delicious food, the sunset has come. So you can enjoy, as I said before, coming in the late afternoon. You can enjoy the daytime and the sunset. So you have the best of both worlds. So yeah, enjoy this view. And talking about great views, I highly recommend you to have a drink at Bar 81, which is the highest champagne bar in the world. It is located on the 81st floor of the Signal Hotel, a 123 floor and 557 meter high skyscraper, currently the tallest building in Korea and the fifth tallest one in the world. In 2019, Bar 81 was listed as one of the best hotel sky bars in the world by Forbes magazine. Definitely a must visit. As you may already know, Seoul is also known to be the technological capital of the world and is that everywhere you go, including metros, train stations, streets, you see high technology, digital art museums uh, everywhere, LCD screens, and here behind me we got the Hiker Ground, which is a place that showcases how it's done K-pop videos, so in here you can be your own K-pop star. So yeah, let's have a look. It uses XR technology and it's done by the Korea Tourist Organization. And most importantly, it is for free. So let's have a look. It's a really cool place to enjoy and to be in touch with really high technology. So as you enter, you got different floors of uh, K-pop scenarios in which you can play and make a video. You can even control what appears um, at the back of each scenario and control even the lights right here even choose the music that you want. I must say that the staff is also super helpful. They are able to take you pictures and make you videos while you dance your favorite music. Really, really cool place. I highly recommend it if you want to come by yourself or with your family. Really, really cool place to have fun. Another most visit when coming to Seoul is definitely the Starfield Library which is located at the Coets Mall and it offers a range of 50,000 plus books from all over the world and in different languages plus 400 types of magazines from economics, politics, hobbies depending what you're looking for and it has spaces to relax all over the place and also you got a coffee shop here so if you want to enjoy your favorite books and have a nice and relaxed time here at the Starfield Library. Uh, you can have a coffee as well. So yeah, definitely a must visit. It is uh, important to note that it's free entry, so you don't have to pay for anything. So enjoy this view, it's really, really impressive. Either you come uh, daytime or nighttime, it's really beautiful. At the nighttime, they put some lights, which make the books even more outstanding when looking at it. I mean, you could spend a whole day here reading uh, your favorite books. And you got here also iPads. So if you like any electronic book, you got also iPads to look through. So it is pretty cool and it's for free, guys. So definitely, as I said before, I must visit. I mean, a picture here, it's uh, 
really beautiful. Another must visit when coming to Seoul, and a must, really must, is the area of Myeongdong, which is very famous and popular to be a shopping district. It is in the top 10 of the most expensive shopping districts in the world, and is that any high-end brand you can think of, it's here. But also you've got a lot of souvenir shops, massage places, and very important, you can find some of the best street food from all Korea here in the area of Myeongdong. Any street you go into, there are so many shops. I mean, I don't know where to go. Any street you go, there is a shop uh, from different uh, types of brands. Also, it is nicely decorated, as you can see the lights behind me. Also, as I said before, loads and loads of street food holes. I'm gonna go to one now to try something. Look what I found here, the famous Dalgona, which is, you may recognize it from the Squid Game, the total successful series that you can see in Netflix. You might recognize it when they did the challenge in which they needed to remove the part of the inside without breaking the cookie. So yeah, this is called Dalgona and it's made of honey. So yeah, let's try it. So if I was in the squid game, I would have lost already because... Well, actually no. When I was trying to open it, it broke one part, but I think the inside is still alright. But yeah, it's really good, really good. I'm gonna be posting as well a full video of the street food here in Seoul but yeah this is just a starter and yes just to show you a little bit of the street food here in Myeongdong and in Seoul the price for this was 2001 so yeah not bad at all interestingly this is a UNESCO World Heritage Street well very interesting I'll follow you I didn't know this talking about food an absolute must visit when coming to Seoul, it is the Wonjon Market, which is one of the largest traditional markets in Korea and was even featured on Netflix documentary Street Food Asia. If you are in the city for any amount of time and looking for one of the best places to eat in Seoul, this is a must visit. A full video of this market will be available in my channel, however, I leave you here a taste of what it's like to be in this wonderful market. One of everyone's favorites when coming to the Wonjon market is Cho Jong Soon's Korean noodles store, which is number 70A. She was featured in the popular Netflix show Street Food. Even before the episode, she was a popular food store choice for locals and foreigners alike. Her popularity is not just because of the show, it is because of the delicious and yummy food prepared by Jong Soon. Definitely a must try. And a trip to Seoul is not completed until you try the traditional Korean barbecue. It's a unique experience where cooking and eating takes the center stage. The area of Hyundai is famous for having plenty of choice for bars and restaurants at good prices for being a university area. For Korean barbecue, the server brings plates of raw meat and side dishes, then everyone can begin cooking and eating their own food. My friend Gina, which is a TikToker from Mexico, living in Korea, took me to the place which she considers to be her favorite Korean barbecue in all Seoul. So I tried to cook, uh, cut the kimchi, but um, I failed. Gigi is the expert here. It's my first time doing the Korean bar. <laughs> oh, she's very good. She's very good. You look like you know what you're doing. All you gotta do is pretend you're doing it. <laughs> Boy, it looks so delicious. It looks very, very yummy. Thank you, Gigi Chef. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Delicious. Mm. Look at that. So as you can see, we didn't like it. <laughs> it was delicious. We ate it all. It was really, really good. Right, Didi? So delicious. <laughs> so yeah. 
definitely a must try. Korean barbecue is a really good experience. Yeah, you cook your own food, you try different kinds of uh, meats, kimchi, definitely a must do when coming to Seoul and when coming to South Korea in general. And which one is your favorite part of this video? Which one is your favorite part of Seoul? Let us know in the comments below, active notifications and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will be seeing you in the next video. Travel wonderful!